Hey, what's up everyone? Today, I wanted to go over two of the most commonly available and least expensive methods of testing the salinity in your saltwater aquarium. Follow along as I prep my saltwater for my next saltwater change and I kind of talk you through exactly what salinity is and why it's so important to a reef aquarium. So when we're talking about salinity, what we're specifically talking about is the measurement of how much salt is dissolved in water. As you know, you can't really see salt crystals in the water column of ocean water, your reef tank, you know, maybe in a place like the Dead Sea, you might see some salt crystals, but in your normal reef aquarium and in your average ocean, you're not gonna see any salt crystals in the water column. Generally speaking, salt is fully dissolved into the water column. Sometimes when the salt splashes around the lid and around the rim of our aquarium, we'll see some salt left over. That's what's called salt creep. And salt creep is what happens when that fresh water dissolves and it leaves those salt crystals behind. That same evaporation happens in a salt water tank. And that is exactly why we test for salinity on a regular basis. You see, when the fresh portion of the water evaporates, just like that salt creep, it leaves that salt behind in the remaining body of water, which means the salt content of that water is going up. And that's exactly what we want to avoid. And the way that we avoid that is by adding our own distilled water. And we add that very slowly so that we don't fluctuate the parameters of the tank very much. We wanna keep that salinity level as stable as possible. There are tons of automated systems that'll do this for you. They're called automated top-off systems or ATO systems, and they'll maintain the level of your aquarium for you so you don't have to be topping it off yourself. So like we mentioned before, salinity as a measurement of all the salt that's dissolved in the water can be measured in two ways. The first one is PPM or parts per million. The second one is SG or specific gravity. For a coral reef tank, you're gonna to wanna to keep your PPM right around 34 to 36. Obviously, there are various situations that you could find yourself in depending on the livestock in the tank, or what coral you're keeping. So do your research depending on what exactly you wanna keep. Don't use this as a rule of thumb. So when we talk about specific gravity, we're talking about the density of one substance, in our case, salt, compared to the density of a given substance, in our case, water. Specific gravity for a reef tank is generally gonna be about 1.026. Again, that can range depending on what you're keeping in your tank. But in general, you're gonna to wanna to keep a reef aquarium with coral and fish at around 1.026. Generally speaking, if you have a fish only tank, your parameters can range. I've seen people keep coral at a specific gravity of 1.029, even higher. There's a decent range of specific gravities between 1.019 and 1.028 that you could play in. But again, in general, rule of thumb for a reef tank, reef aquarium with coral and fish, you're gonna want about 1.026 specific gravity. Like with all those suggestions, I highly suggest you do your own research Make sure that you're looking into exactly what you wanna keep. There's tons of amazing resources all over YouTube, all over the internet. Do your research, be safe, and make sure you're keeping the parameters for the species that you wanna be keeping. I recommend that you find a salinity that works for you and then keep it as stable as possible. All right, so now that we've covered what salinity is, why it's so important and how we measure it, let's go inside and check out the tools that we use to measure salinity. So there are two devices that we use to test salinity. They're both commonly available and really not that expensive. The first one is called a hydrometer. A hydrometer is a little device with a swinging arm in it. Because of its weight, the arm will either raise or sink depending on the specific gravity of the salt water that you're putting into the hydrometer. This will give a reading of how buoyant your salt water is. Think of it kind of like the Dead Sea again. That's so salty. That's at a 1.3 specific gravity that you can float in it. So at these levels, based on the weight of that little arm, 
It'll give us the buoyancy and therefore the specific gravity based on the numbers on the side of this little hydrometer so we can get readouts. Now keep in mind hydrometers, they're not really that accurate. The arm can have salt corroded on it or can have any other sort of mechanical issue that can cause it not to float properly. You also can't calibrate them, so you can't guarantee accuracy in any way. That being said, they're pretty affordable and they're an easy way to get a salinity reading on your aquarium. You're just gonna have to do a lot of readings and take an average and it's not gonna be as precise as you're gonna want it to be. Using a hydrometer is pretty straightforward. What you're gonna wanna do is dump it in the aquarium, get some water in there. I like to move it around afterwards to make sure that arm is nice and calibrated. Then what we'll do is we'll set it down on a flat surface and we'll look at our readout. Looks like our hydrometer is reading exactly where we want it to at 1.026. So our salinity is right on point with this saltwater aquarium. So that's a hydrometer. If you're looking for tried and true accuracy, then I recommend you move on to a refractometer. I know it sounds like a big word. I know it looks a little bit complicated, but if you've gotten this far in the video and you've understood everything, trust me, this thing is a breeze. When light hits water at a certain angle, that water will bend or diffract the light at a certain angle. When we dissolve salt into that water, then the light will bend or diffract at a different angle because the density of that water is different. So distilled water will have a reading, a specific gravity of 1.000. But since we add salt to our water, as we discussed before, we're gonna look for a target specific gravity of about 1.026. And what this refractometer does is allow you just by looking through this hole to get in a specific readout on where exactly your salinity is in your tank based on the light coming into it. So to measure salinity using a refractometer, what you do is you grab a few drops of water from your aquarium and you drop them right onto the glass. You'll then close the lid. And when you look through the glass into a bright light source, like your tank light or the sun or light in your room, and while looking through this eyepiece, your salinity measurement is where the blue or the colored half is going to meet the white half. Refractometers can also be calibrated, which is one of the reasons why they're so reliable. In order to calibrate them, what you'll do is you'll use some distilled water, some RODI, reverse osmosis water, water that reads at 1.000 specific gravity. And because you know that specific gravity, you'll be able to tune your refractometer using a couple of cool little devices. In order to tune your refractometer for precision, what you'll do, at least in this one's case, is you'll remove this little stopper, and underneath that stopper is a little flathead screw that you can turn with the provided screwdriver in order to calibrate to get the exact position that you'll need for a salinity readout. You'll be able to use the screwdriver provided in order to turn the screw and get your salinity readout to be 1.000 in order to match your distilled water readout. Then your refractometer will be calibrated and every reading after that will be precise. Be aware that temperature affects PPM and SG readings. So if you're gonna be using anything outside of room temperature water, make sure to readjust your readings to adjust for that temperature difference. Refractometers range in value from around $20 to $100 and you really get what you pay for. In order to get the most precise readings, you're going to have to spend a little bit more money but that's not to say that spending $20 is a huge step above getting a hydrometer and on your way to an accurate daily salinity reading. There's also a lot of other things that you can use to measure the salinity in your tank, like probes, digital refractometers, conductivity meters. But the goal of this video was to cover some of the least expensive and most commonly available methods of testing the salinity in your saltwater tank. So if you liked what you saw, drop a like, Subscribe to see more and drop a comment. Let me know what else you guys want to learn about. I'll see you in the next one.